Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be covering an over the board classical game that I played yesterday evening against like, I believe he's 7 or 8 years old, it's like Indian like prodigy, like if he doesn't become a grandmaster I will be shocked. Uh, I've played him quite a few times in the past and I think I won the first game I played against him and I've lost like the last four. This game was kind of mad because I knew exactly what he was going to play in the opening. We have a Sicilian, which I know he plays because we've played it before. We have A3, and I'm trying to play the Gambit line, but I knew from preparation, because we've, I've played against him several times in the past, that he plays G6. Now, this game was part of my chess league in my city, and the way it works is it's like a 6 versus 6 format. So me and Adifia were on board two. So like board one is your highest rated player, board two, three, four, etc. And it's the overall score of the two teams that decides which team wins. So obviously your individual result affects your rating, but the overall team result is what affects the league position. So it's quite an interesting format. This game was very, very nice though. Um, I'd prepped all of this. The whole point of the opening for white is to clamp down on the d5 square. And black essentially tries to build up... <clears throat> they, he, he tries to build up pieces to allow him to play d5. Hence moves like knight to e6. Sorry, pawn to e6 and knight g to e7. And the queen is obviously on d8. <clears throat> trying to play d5 and break out of the position. But... It's a really tricky position for black to handle from here. And I go h4, obviously intending to play h5. And black can go wrong very easily. Because say black tries to go d5 immediately after h5, it's kind of difficult for black to navigate the position. If he tries to take on e4, something like knight e4, the c5 pawn is loose because the bishop has been kettoed. And... There is some issues on the king side. Black's best move is h6, which I mean, it's just a tough move to play. But Adifia plays h5, which is the best response. You can go h6 and go into this line, but this is just good for white. Like, it is just a good line for white because Black's king side is just incredibly weak with the loss of the g pawn and the fact that white's h pawn is clamping down on the g6 square, stopping a knight from going there, which would provide some nice cover for the black position. So he goes h5, and bishop g5 is the main move here. You can go knight to h3 or f3, but bishop g5 is basically the same. Like, they all have the same evaluation, and if you do go knight to f3 or h3, then the computer wants to follow up with bishop to g5 anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> but the point is basically to pin the knight to the queen so that the knight can't support a d5 push because that is basically the idea of the position for the black pieces. So it's really difficult for black to navigate this position because if I just tell you to look at this position on the board and say you're playing the black pieces, right? You just want to castle because d5 is your idea, yeah? Like, that, that's the whole point of the opening. It's the Sicilian defense. It's a closed type of Sicilian. Obviously, it's a bit strange because of A3. It's a weird line. But the whole point is to try and go D5. You can then open up your bishop. Your other bishop is very strong. You want to try and block this bishop off by playing D5. Maybe get your queen out onto the queen side. You want to castle king side to be nice and safe. And you probably want to start some queen side expansion, right? or central expansion, maybe get a knight onto d4, something like that, which you will see later on in the game. <coughs> but the problem is for black, is that the main moves are b6 and a6. b6 obviously makes sense to try and fianchetto the bishop, but you, you just intuitively want to castle, because how do you continue your development without castling? I mean, in this line, the computer gives queen d2, d6, not even going for d5, which again looks counterintuitive. Knight f3, queen d7, rook d1, bishop b7, castle. And 
I feel like white just has a lot of space in this variation. I'm going to flip it back to the white side. And black still has to try and choose where to castle. And in a lot of these lines, it is better for black to castle queenside. That's not really how these like sort of dragon type positions with the bishop on e7. It's not really how they tend to work. Normally black castles kingside. The problem is, after the move bishop to g5, you can't castle kingside. This is what my opponent does. He castles kingside, and it's just bad. It, it, it's just a bad move. Now, I told him after the game, actually, that you have to be really careful with black here. Essentially, you want to castle, but you can only castle if white castles. So if you play the black side from these positions where g6, bishop g7 is one of the best ways to counter this a3 Sicilian setup, you need to know that you need to wait for white to castle before you castle. Because if black castles preemptively, white's not just going to continue with a move like knight to f3 or queen to d2, which are valid moves, right? Trying to play maybe bishop to h6. I did consider queen d2, but I thought that king h7 neutralized everything uh, because it stops this. But the computer gives plus 0.45 for white for a very, very specific reason. And it's for the reason that, wait, it's for the same reason as the computer gives plus 0.8 in this position. But the move is far more effective immediately. And I would encourage you to try and find the move. Why is castling so bad for black? Just pause the video, see if you can find it. The idea is g4. And g4 just shatters the position for the black pieces. Because if you take on g4, queen g4, h5 is coming. You cannot do a thing about it. The problem is with the black position. Black puts the knight on e7. If the knight was on f6, then the knight would control the h5 square and control the g4 square, and g4 would not be playable. However, let's go back. If in this position knight to f6 is played, the game is a bit different, because now white can go for something like f4. And if black tries to play d5, White always has the option of e5 attacking the knight. Now, this wouldn't happen if the knight is on e7. The positioning of this knight is very, very important. Because you can't go h4 in this position like you do against knight uh, to e7. Because you have no threat. Because the knight covers the h5 square. The knight on e7 doesn't. There's a difference. Therefore, after knight to e7 h4 h5 black needs to go h5 because it's not covered by the knight right and like i showed in the previous variation uh in something like this everything just blows up in black's face if he allows h5 to happen so after castles in g4 <clears throat> black simply lacks cover i like throughout the game like the whole game that i um it was like a classical game, 80 minutes for each side plus 10 second increments. So it was a fair few hours because uh, we went right down to the wire at the end. And I will discuss the time management as we go on. By the way, if you're enjoying this video and this format of game review, please let me know. And if you don't enjoy it, again, please let me know. Like, what can I improve? Um, I want to try to be not only educational, but entertaining for you guys. So just let me know in the comments <clears throat> what I'm doing well, what I'm doing badly. The problem is, oh, sorry, give me a second. I apologize. I've got a bit of a like weird sinus thing going on. I don't know if it's obvious in my voice or not. The problem for black, right, is, and you will see this later on in the game, this knight on e7, yes, it covers d5, but it's loose. Now, you might be saying it's defended twice. It's loose. The problem is, because black struggles to play the move d5, and this is why Adifia actually wasn't worried initially about g4 when he castled, because he thought that he could play d5. And you can, but you're going to have to give up a pawn on the king side and allow me to take on g6, which is dangerous, right? That's very dangerous to allow. And 
I mean, he, he, he said that he thought D5 was just good here for black initially, right? But once I played G4, he took about half an hour, which bearing in mind, again, 80 minutes per side, to figure out what to do. And he did find one of the best moves for black. He found queen to B6. And like I said, this knight is loose. Now it's no longer pinned, but it's only defended once by this knight. But this knight wants to do other things, but it can't because of the pressure on the knight. And this knight is defending g6, which will come in very... Um, it, will, it will play a big part later in the game. This g6 pawn is not safe. It's not safe because of the pressure on the light squares and the fact that h5 could come in at any point for white. So this knight is doing an important job, but it also can't go anywhere because of the superfluous relationship between these two knights stopping it from going to c6 that is um a nice little idea in chess superfluous knights where they basically do the same thing because they're like connected and obviously it can't go to g6 it can't retreat to c8 or g8 and my pawn on e4 is clamping down on its movement forward right my opponent finds queen b6 and this is the best idea just trying to link up with the bishop on the dark squares on the queen side here there is only one move to maintain the advantage for white i think i spent about 10 minutes in this position because i was trying to maintain a time advantage but i also obviously want to play the best moves because i can feel that i have something here like i know i'm better but i need to execute it correctly so try and find the move here for white I think it's quite a nice move. It's rook b1. And it looks ugly. Like, I would have loved, let's say, I have an extra move to go, let's say, queen e2, a6, queenside castle. This would be perfect, right? My king defends b2. My rook is in the game. My king is safe. I can throw my f pawn forward and I can just explode the king side. I don't have time. I have to go rook b1 because I need to defend this pawn. Also, it takes the rook off of the diagonal of the bishop, which is very useful. And if this knight ever does move and the bishop takes on b2, there's going to be problems with pins to the queen on the b-file. So this rook gets out of danger, defends b2, asks this queen what it's really doing here. Now, one of the moves I considered for black in this position was d5, which I expected him to play. The reason being is that I have to be very careful not to allow this pawn to take on d5. Because let's say I take, black is better. After ed5, this bishop opens up onto the g4 square. My king is weak. It's not obvious where I'm going to castle. The knight is now liberated once this pawn comes off the board. It can come to f5. And the e-file is going to open up. The bishop's going to get out. This rook's going to get into the game. Everything kind of falls apart. Yes, I can take on d5. But I believe I'm just losing. Bishop g4, f3, check. Something like king f2. This is just all falling apart for white. So if d5 is played... I cannot take. I need to let him take me and then take back with the pawn to maintain the restriction of this e7 knight. This is something we will see happen later in the game. My, my opponent didn't play d5. He took on g4 instead. And to be fair, it's really not obvious what black can do here. I was expecting f6. Well, d5 and f6 were the moves that I was expecting alongside taking on g4 because that's like kind of an obvious move i wasn't sure exactly where i want where i wanted to put my bishop i was probably going to put it on e3 to pressure the c5 pawn and i do have to be careful of d5 d4 with a fork that is one of the downsides of bishop to e3 but like i mentioned before this knight is now glued to the g6 square because f6 is played, which no longer defends the g6 pawn, which we will see kind of in a different way later on in the game. And I mean, I still maintain the threat of taking on h5 and just simply winning a pawn. So here the computer wants takes, takes, and f5, which is kind of just what happened in the game anyway, as we'll see. So hg4, queen g4, f5, 
it's really important not to take here and i realized this in the game now the problem is for white if i retreat the queen which is what happened and my opponent were to take i don't really want to take with the pawn because it kind of just disconnects my structure and if my opponent ever takes the knight this is incredibly ugly however as you see the evaluation bar shooting up i realized it doesn't matter it does not matter if my structure gets completely ruined like this because black cannot afford to lose his dark squared bishop because that is the key defender of the king so i realized that i can't take because something like knight takes or rook takes and black starts to get out he can then go d5 without a pawn controlling that square he can play his knight into the game he can bring this knight into the game obviously this knight is currently defending this knight but once this knight moves this knight can also move right so i realized i can't take so i drop the queen back and just maintain pressure on the g file if the h file opens up it could be very useful this bishop because the f pawn has moved is now pinning this e pawn which will actually come into play later on in the game but if you start to look at the position like just on a geometric level this king is starting to get cut off on all sides if pawns start disappearing from the board the king is going to be in a very very tough situation and pawns are going to start disappearing once h5 is played black does have counterplay though after queen g2 fe4 i take back with the d pawn which is the only move to maintain the advantage if you take back with the knight d5 is played the bishop gets locked out this bishop is going to be liberated if e5 can be played my knight is booted back to d2 and black starts to get out white maintains a tiny advantage but i would probably take black in this position to be honest queen g2 fe4 de4 c4 now my opponent played this move c4 with like six minutes on the clock he got insanely low on time i still had about 40 minutes in this position i was managing my time very well and i realized after this c4 move that i need to slow down i need to chill out and I need to figure out exactly the right way to execute this position. C4 is a pretty ingenious move. Because you can't take. Because of bishop c3. And the bishop is no longer defending the rook. So you can't take back because you lose the rook. And white doesn't have enough counterplay. Uh, to like checkmate black. It, it just doesn't work. <clears throat> so C4 is a really nice idea. Because what it also does. Is it prepares the move d5 because the bishop no longer defends the d5 square it doesn't quite work and h5 is the best move for white in this position i did see that d5 could be played by black and i was a little bit concerned because after something like takes takes i realized that white isn't actually all that good sorry about that my headset cut out um there's, there's just problems with moves like queen to a5 the knight's got to retreat back and yes black has to give up the dark squared bishop but he's he can get his light squared bishop out now he can get his rook involved my king is the one that's actually suffering here you can go bishop d2 something like queen c2 hg6 but this is so difficult to calculate and to give up a bishop like this and find rook h8 the only move to maintain the advantage for white uh, i'm sorry but that's just not happening <laughs> it's just not happening so i go knight g to e2 instead just to defend this knight i figured this knight could come out to f4 at some point uh to try and put pressure on the light squares maybe g3 to support an h5 push also defends d4 which could be useful because black has a lot of pressure on the d4 square but my idea was <clears throat> if i defend this knight then i'm threatening this and if d5 is played here i thought that i was better now i wasn't totally sure on the variation because i don't think it's good to take actually 
yeah, again, this queen to a5 idea. And if the knight comes back, bishop b6 defending c4, queen e4. I saw this. I thought this was good for white. But black has queen f5. And white is up a pawn. But I guess the bishop is locked in um, against the c4 pawn, which is an interesting, interesting variation. Black is kind of breaking out in this position. Honestly, I wouldn't like to play this as white. However, after d5, you don't have to take. You can just go h5 or f4. Probably h5 is the move that I would have played if I don't take on d5. I was concerned about the move d4. Apparently, you just drop the knight back to d1 and you're good. But that is difficult to play realistically. I suppose, though, if d4 is played, then that loosens the c4 pawn and therefore this diagonal in general. So it's still good for white. Like, the computer still gives, you know, a big advantage. But after knight g to e2, again, like I said, Adifia was very, very low on time. And he goes queen to c5. After he played this, I thought it was a really strong move. Because I wanted to go h5, and the computer thinks this is the best idea, but I was so concerned about the move d5 that I didn't do it. Because you can't really take unless you find rook d1. But again, I was concerned about moves like d4. Apparently, I don't have to be. b4 exists, which is just kind of crazy. But I was a bit concerned. I went rook d1 straight away, which is still like the second best move by only a tiny margin because I'm just adding more defense to the d5 square. Black has one, two, three defenders. I now have one, two, three, four attackers. So d5 can't be played. Therefore, my opponent goes knight to e5. Again, insanely low on time. He had like two minutes left at this point. And I realized this is just a terrible move. Now, obviously, he's trying to play knight to f3 check. And I did consider maybe allowing it, but I thought there was no point letting him do that. And, oh, wait, no, I actually hangs a bishop. I did consider the move rook to h3, just defending the f3 square. But I thought that was a bit of a lame attempt at controlling the knight. Because I want to play h5. And if my rook is tied down to defend in the third rank, then I can't defend the h5 square at the same time. So f4 is the move here. And I did see it. I was just, you know, debating different ways to go about it. Do I really want to open up my king like this, give away the e3 square? But the problem is for black, he has to retreat the knight back. And I've essentially just gained time. I, I just get a move to go h5, which is what happens in the game. Now, if the knight retreats to f7, then I can take on e7, queen takes... And either queen g6 or bishop to c4, white just wins a pawn. Black has zero counterplay. Everything is held together beautifully by my knight and my queen. And my bishop and my queen are starting to get into the attack. h5 is coming. There is nothing black can do about it. My king can always self-castle and run to the queen side as well. So black can't do it. He cannot bring the knight back to f7. He has to go back to c6. I go h5, trying to blast open the king side. And finally, after about eight moves, I get to play h5 with everything set up. My king looks weak, but it isn't. It's fine because of this massive pawn wall protected by all of my pieces, right? Queen b6, again, my opponent very, very low on time. He's below two minutes at this point, And there's 10 second increment, which is not a lot. It's not a lot. It may feel like that in online chess, but not over the board chess. And he just attacks b2. And I was actually a bit concerned here. I took about 15 minutes because I was like, I need to find the best continuation. And I had a feeling that I needed to just cash in and take something. But I just wasn't confident. Now, the reason is, after hg6, right, I was like, okay, what about queen b2? The knight is hanging. Now, queen h3 is playable, defending the knight and trying to get in, which I didn't see. I didn't notice this. Um, I also couldn't figure out after knight to g6 where my attack was. After queen h7, king f7, 
uh, bishop h6, rook g8, I just missed that I had rook g1, and black is completely lost. Uh, I, I, I just missed this annoyingly. I think probably because if you go back to this position, it's not obvious that the G file is going to be open because there's currently so many pieces in the way, right? So I missed that idea annoyingly. And therefore, I couldn't go for this attack in like a safe mindset. I instead played Rook B1. And you might be saying that you literally just brought the Rook from B1. You're going back to B1. My reasoning was, I, I knew this probably wasn't the best move, but two, two things were on my mind. Firstly, Adifia was very low on time. It was like a minute 30, so he needs to make a decision. If he goes back to C5, which is where the queen came from, <clears throat> I have basically been able to play F4 and H5 for free. Because if we go back to the position that he goes queen to C5 in, Right? We have queen c5 here. And let me find... Where is it? Okay. Queen c5 here. A few moves later. Queen c5 here. I have included f4 and h5. So I thought, oh, this can only be good for white. And the computer agrees. So after rook b1, black needs to try and do something. d5 is the move the computer wants to play. It looks very difficult difficult to play this and again black does not have time to calculate such a bold move still probably the best idea as the computer says not even just from a computer evaluation standpoint but from a practical standpoint of trying to pose problems for me e5 is the best move for white shutting off this bishop clamping down on the dark squares locking this bishop out you do give up the f5 square but i suppose g6 is always a problem my opponent, though, chose queen to a5. He, I think he had like 10 seconds when he played this. And remember, he's, he's living off increment now. He has this 10 second increment that he's living off of. So I'm feeling quite confident. I just need to keep playing good moves. And at some point, <clears throat> he's going to mess up because I have a winning position. I know it. I just need to figure it out. And he isn't actually threatening anything here. So I just took on c4. I just took the pawn. Let's get my bishop back open. The computer loves this move. And I can take on g6 any day. I'd like him to take me, really, so I can get my rook on h5 and keep my queen on the g-file. I don't really want to take here because he can kind of keep it blocked if I do that. He can use it as an umbrella pawn. So I take on c4. The queen goes back to c5, done like a bit of a weird dance, which, you know, kind of shows that he doesn't really have time. And I was between bishop to b3 and bishop to d3 here. I chose bishop to b3 because I thought it was more restrictive because I want to play f5 at some point and try and play on the pin of this pawn. Bishop d3 was slightly better, but he goes knight d4. I exchange a pair of knights. You have to take with a bishop because if you take with a queen, you lose a knight. So bishop takes. He has no threat. I take on e7 and I simply just win a pawn. Queen g6. Not actually the best move. The best move is knight d5, which like, okay, you attack the queen, and if you take bishop d5, and apparently black is lost. After something like king g7, you take on g6. If the king moves to the h-file, then you open up the h-file, and you just get completely slaughtered. So I didn't see this, because it's kind of a crazy move. I have like 10 minutes left at this point. My opponent, again, he has like 10 seconds. There's no reason to overcomplicate this. I'm up two pawns. Queen g7. Here, I think this is a very, very important position. Try and find the most decisive, precise move. I'll give you a second. Okay, so, of course, you want to just take on g7 and keep things simple. But my issue was that this pawn is actually quite difficult to defend. And if I lose this pawn, I'm only at one pawn. And my opponent is good. Like, he is really good. I'm not actually confident that I can convert that. So I didn't want to take. I wanted him to take me. So I could take back with the pawn, play f5, play on this pin on the king, and keep my pawns together, right? And also open up the h file. That was my idea, so that I can maintain my two-pawn advantage. Because again, I wasn't convinced that I could win if I lost this pawn. So basically, 
You either go knight b5, knight e2, or f5. Those are the moves. I chose knight e2, second best move. Attack the bishop, defend f4. If black takes here, which is what he does in the game, I take back. The bishop has to move. He chose e3 to put pressure on the pawn. And I go f5, playing on this pin on the king. And the king is running out of squares. <clears throat> he only has one safe square. Well, two, I guess. King g7 is played. I go knight to g3. Another accurate move. We defend f5. But we also have ideas of knight to h5. And it's not obvious where this king's going. Bishop c5. My opponent retreats the bishop. I'm not really sure what it's doing. I guess it's just trying not to get forked. Knight h5. King h6. And the game is over. The game is essentially over. Find the combination. It's important to be able to see these kinds of ideas. But there is a fairly forcing combination to just win the game for the white pieces. To try and find it, I'll give you a second to pause the video. Okay, the move is g7. You just attack the rook, defended by your knight. Yes, you would love to move the knight with discovered check, but there's not any useful discovered checks, right? Because the knight, the knight is on a light square, so if it moves to a dark square, it can only target light squares. There's nothing worth targeting. So g7 attacks the rook, defended by the knight. The rook moves. g8, queen. Rook takes. Knight f6, discovered check. We force the rook onto a light square by pushing the pawn down with tempo. And then after the king moves, we take. And my opponent keeps playing on in this position. Rook d1, very accurate. I could see that the d file was going to open because I'm going to take on e6 at some point. My opponent can't take me because of the pin. So after king to g7, I take. And if you don't take back, you lose anyway because I'm going to take. So my opponent takes back. We have rook to d8, just playing on this pin. I've got to be a bit careful this bishop can't have some kind of discovered attack, but because of the pawn on e6, it just can't do anything. b6, and the final move of the game, rook h to h8. It's game over. Like, you're going to lose everything now, and there is no point playing on. My opponent resigns, and my team overall wins this game. We were the underdogs because um, we we are like the club's c team in the first division and we were against our club's b team which is why i know my opponent so well but yeah just a very solid game i didn't i didn't really do a whole lot wrong my opponent just kind of basically just went wrong by castling on move eight and from there it was just downhill but again this is why opening preparation is important I didn't know g4 was the move here, but I knew that black had to be careful about castling. So when I saw him castle, I was like, is this one of those situations where I can just go for it? And I took a gamble. It paid off. It doesn't always pay off. But, you know, in my head, I was like, look, I'm here to have fun. I'm, I get very nervous when I play chess over the board. Like I, I went to the loot like eight times. Um, I get really nervous. But you just got to go for it at the end of the day. Like have a bit of fun attack your opponent and you got to trust your gut sometimes as well so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did and you haven't already please drop a like and subscribe it really helps keep me motivated making these videos and i will have more classical games coming your way because the, the chess league has kicked off again in my city so you'll be seeing plenty more of these if you want to see them Thank you very much for watching and click the video that appears somewhere on the screen now because YouTube thinks that you're really going to like it.